is Musings of a Shy podcast, a Dogecoin peer-to-peer sharing economy show. I'm your host, Hero Job Shy, and this is episode episode 29. Did you put the envelope in your pocket? On this episode, uh, the, this episode is going to be about the term blockchain. I will be describing what a blockchain is and what it entails and how it applies to the cryptocurrency space. But before we get into the term, the news. In the news, the payment service provider Eden has integrated with the world's leading Bitcoin payment processor, BitPay. This is coming from the International Business Time, the UK edition. Aiden is a, the payment pro- private service provider for Facebook, Spotify, and Rainier, as well as over 3,000 merchants. Uh, this is great news for the company BitPay, but also great news for the Bitcoin ecosystem. It means that at any point in time, Facebook or Spotify could easily turn on that option for them to accept Bitcoin. Uh, this is not going to be immediate. It's going to take some time. But I would expect sometime within the year, you will be seeing some type of announcement from merchants that use uh, Aiden will be accepting um, Bitcoin. Uh, this is someone already happened with the Braintree, which I spoken about in previous episodes, which is the merchant pr- payment providing service platform that is associated with uh, eBay and in, in particular with PayPal. And they have just opened that option up in the beta with certain merchants accepting Bitcoin. So this is 2015 is a year where you're going to see mainstream companies accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment. Already, Facebook is accepting or playing with the option of accepting money through their Facebook messaging service where you can send money to your friend. You may have already seen the commercial with Wells Fargo where you can email um, money uh, through, throughout uh, throughout the world through your account. Uh, Gmail already does this option where you can email people and send them payments. Uh, PayPal already does that where you're able to email the person's address associated with their PayPal account and email them the payment form and they can accept payment or you can email them a bill. So this is another step in the direction of a, a you know adoption adoption of Bitcoin as a as a means of acceptance for goods and services. In other news, there is the next big thing in uh, Bitcoin is about a mainstream adoption by the back door. It comes from News BTC, which is a Bitcoin news service, and basically it's talking about two uh, projects that they think would enable and allow for. Uh, adoption of Bitcoin through the back door. Basically what it is, is people have spoken about the killer app within Bitcoin or making it much easier for regular individuals who are not tech savvy to incorporate or accept Bitcoin as a means of payment for goods and services. And one of these companies is called Online Commerce, Commerce, which is focusing on a business wanting to serve and therefore take payments from international customer base. And basically what they're doing is they're basically in essence hiding the aspect of the details of the Bitcoin acceptance within their platform service to make it easier for people to accept payments. Uh, the other company is called Zed. Uh, Zed is a, a project that is developed by the, the, the team that was behind Cashcoin.io, which closed down uh, for business so they can focus on ZipZap brand. And basically they're seeking to do the same, same thing. They call this uh, payment rails. This is uh, another type of like service that again is part of the Bitcoin 2.0 sphere where they're again this are just trying to seek adoption on a mass level for individuals to accept Bitcoin but making it easier for them to do so. A Ripple which I will get into in just a second for our next news story is a type of cryptocurrency that is built in where it allows for those type of payment rails or a type of system where everything is kind of hidden it's just like um, for example your web address. The web address that you know when you type in a name whether it be eBay or Facebook is not exactly the true web address. It's just a mechanism that allows you to find the web address. The web address is a series of numbers. That's how uh, the internet works. But on top of the, what was basically built on top of it is the naming system that allows people to access and search out and seek information through just naming a website, the domains. And that is a type of 
service that people are seeking to apply to Bitcoin because this, the naming type of service, the platform that was built on top of the numbers allowed for a mass adaption or not mass adaption, mass adoption by people into the internet because it made things easier. All they had to do was know the name of the website with what they were seeking and they just type it into the search, not the search bar, but type it into the HTTP address and they were able to access that website. Eventually other types of services like Google and Napster, not Napster, but Net, Netscape, Netscape uh, came in development, which was able to bundle and was able to make the internet itself searchable so people can seek out specific little bits of information. They may not remember the exact address for the website, but they knew what the subject about was about. For example, uh, Ain't It Cool News, which is one of the oldest movie sites out there. If you knew uh, the name of a movie, you knew you read the article, but you weren't sure where what website you, you read it on, you were able to type in the name of the movie for example say the matrix or was an early late 90s movie seven and type in seven into netscape and it will pop up every reference to that movie seven or matrix and you were able to find through that search algorithm you were able to find the website that you read that article which was ain't it cool news so this is just another method another means of making adoption of bitcoin easier for the mass populace in other news, and speaking of Ripple, there's a great article by The Observer concerning the race to replace Bitcoin. Uh, many individuals believe that Bitcoin, while it was great, and the, the block technology, the protocol in itself, was also a fantastic idea and it's being applied to different stuff. Ripple, which is a protocol in Ripple Labs, originally called OpenCoin, Ripple's currency unit is XRP. And basically what they're trying to do, and what the second company uh, is trying to do as well, called Stellar, is trying to do that rail system where they're able to make mass adoption of cryptocurrencies easy for both the merchant end and the customer end. And this is a great article, not only talking about these particular individual, uh, these particular individual companies, but also the developer of both companies, which is Jed McCobb. And if you remember, I spoke about Jed McCobb in regards to Silk Road when I went over the timeline of Silk Road in Marty, You Have to Go Back to the Future episode. Uh, Jed, Jed McCobb is the, de- the gentleman who started Mt. Gox, uh, the Bitcoin exchange, whom he then turned around and sold to uh, Mark Collar. Mark K. I can never say that guy's last name, but Mark K, who is the last individual to hold uh, Mt. Cox. And basically it talks about his, him as a personality, the different companies that he has developed, uh, how people perceived him, how things have you know gone this way and that way for him as, a, as an individual, basically the various concepts that he's helped develop. There's a very interesting article about not only Ripple and Stellar Labs, but this individual. I encourage you to, to read the article because it talks about personality, it talks about the people who develop these things, and most importantly, it talks about the future of Bitcoin 2.0 and whether or not there is something that's going going to replace Bitcoin. Because you have to also remember Bitcoin, there's only 20 million coins that will ever be developed, that will ever be made. That's not enough coins out there for everyone to use. In essence, there's like, what, there's like seven, maybe eight billion people on the planet Earth. Uh, if you discount children and, and the infirmed and the old and those who, you know, are in prison and all that stuff, and you were just eliminate that, for example, let's just keep the math simple. Let's say that four billion people would have access to the monetary system. Then that that four four billion people are going to want to have a piece of Bitcoin, and it's going to be very difficult when there's 20 million Bitcoins out there in existence. Even if you were to divide Bitcoin, and if, if even at one point, if for example, a bit which is the lowest amount of Bitcoin you can have. It's down to like the thousands, 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 thousands of the division of Bitcoin. If, even if one bit were to eventually be worth $1, mind you, a bit is just a part of a Bitcoin. It's not the full Bitcoin in itself. Uh, as still, the, the math is not there for everyone to have a piece of Bitcoin. That's why a number of different cryptocurrencies are out there in existence and are being utilized. But Ripple is attempting to kind of be that coin that everyone can use, the, the billions of people can use. It remains to be seen if it is going to be that BIP, that that uh, payment process service as far as cryptocurrency go, goes, because Ripple is both a cryptocurrency and a payment process servicer, uh, whether or not it's going to do that. But again, this is just an instant article that brings up a lot of uh, ideas and a lot of, it talks about a lot of the concepts about behind Ripple and Stellar, but also the individual, this, individuals that are responsible for its development, in particular, Jed McLeod, who's associated with the development of Mt. Cox. And that is it for the news. On to charity shoutouts. 
This week's charity shout out goes to Africa to the Moon. Africa to the Moon is attempting to make a thunderclap where more individuals be aware of the organization and its association with Dogecoin. There will be a link in the show notes where you can associate yourself with a thunderclap. If you're unfamiliar with thunderclap, basically thunderclap is a, a social media bullhorn where you can link your Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr account. And at a one single time, all these accounts will display the same message to all your followers and users and as a way of to send out messages and reach individuals that normally would not see or hear about that message because it goes through the people associated with you and those people associated with them and spreads out in that fashion. So there'll be a link in the show notes concerning the thunderclap for Africa to the moon. Uh, Crypto Crawl, uh, which had a, a beta test uh, last Friday, uh, February the 6th, basically the Crypto Crawl is a a means or attempt to bring as many Las Vegas businesses within the downtown area that is known as 18B to accept cryptocurrency. Uh, they had 12 people in to show up for the uh, cryptocurrency event where they did a bit of a donation and and uh, education and raffling uh, at the at the event. But they are just attempting to you know bring more awareness and most importantly, what they need is funds to fund the wallets associated with Dogecoin and Bitcoin so they can give it to these new individuals and they can go out and spend some money using cryptocurrency and be familiar with cryptocurrency and spreading the word. Uh, so if you click on the links, you'll be able to find that information to where you can send some dogecoin or some bitcoin their way uh, crypto india which did a, a fundraiser for books is now doing another fundraiser to send some kids in need in the in the area of india to a picnic uh, this is a great charity a uh, little group uh, they've done some fundraisers before through dogecoin and they're doing another one again i encourage you to give some funds tor- towards their way it's a great way to not only spread the word about dogecoin but most importantly to help kids in need and now for some dogecoin business shout outs my dogecoin shout outs uh, this portion of the the show is a little bit new it's basically me shouting out various businesses or activities within the dogecoin space uh, that i think you should be aware of uh text doge what i spoke i spoke about on a previous episode is an attempt to make sms messaging service uh the ability to send dogecoin through that type of service uh, i will discuss about sms uh on another time on a, on the term episode but it basically just to make you aware it is a a service that is coming out soon uh, they have made they have delayed their beta testing of to send sms messages with dogecoin a send chat which uh, failed in its uh, fundraising activity through block trust uh, is reconfiguring itself to try to find funds but basically send chat is a messaging service that is it has enabled uh, dark coin dogecoin litecoin and bitcoin and several other types of uh, cryptocurrency within their messaging service. Basically think of Facebook Messenger, but without uh, all your messages saved on a central server. It's based off the Telegram uh, messaging platform. If you're familiar with Telegram, basically you'll be able to chit chat and talk to your friends, whether as a one-on-one communication or a group method without anyone being aware of your conversation because everything is encrypted. Most importantly, the send chat individuals are also unaware of your type of conversations you're having. Basically only the people who know about your conversations are the people you talk about or talk to. Uh, Dogeip, which is a, a micro kind of blog platform, or at least they're configuring themselves into a micro, bo- micro blog platform. Um, I've tried it out. It's a little bit of fun. Basically what you do is you send 15 uh, Dogecoin to the service and you type out whatever type of message that you have. So however much Dogecoin you send to your designated wallet is how much you can uh, type out and and send and basically your messages are permanently remembered in the blockchain so anyone can go back go through the blockchain look at the blockchain number and pick out your message and it's fun it's a little fun activity and in a different way to utilize uh, blockchain technology and the other shout out goes to the mini doge car campaign they only need four more t-shirts to be able to fund for the entire season for the driver so i encourage you to click on the link purchase a t-shirt it's only $19.99 you get a sweet sweet Doge car t-shirt and you also fund and enable a dream of an individual out there uh, named Ashley so that she could go around and basically go around the track and do it up on the uh, on the track in a Doge car and that is it for the Dogecoin uh, shout outs on to the term of the episode so the term of this episode is blockchain what is blockchain and how does it fit within the cryptocurrency space every single cryptocurrency that exists out there has a blockchain so there's a dogecoin blockchain bitcoin blockchain dark chain dark coin blockchain whatever the cryptocurrency is there will be a blockchain and i'm going to just 
I call this information primarily from Investopedia and what my personal experience is. I'm going to read from Investopedia and then just break down uh, the term. The definition of a blockchain. A blockchain is a public ledger of all Bitcoin transactions that have ever been executed. It's constantly growing as a completed blocks are added to it with a new set of records. The blocks are added to the blockchain in a linear chronicle order. Each node, a computer connected to the Bitcoin network using a client that performs the task of validating and relaying transactions, gets a copy of the black the blockchain, which gets downloaded automatically upon joining the Bitcoin network. The blockchain has a complete information about the addresses and their balances right from the Genesis block to the most recently completed block. So let's break that down. Uh, they use the example of Bitcoin because it's the first cryptocurrency ever created and it's the most popular. So the Bitcoin is the cryptocurrency coin. So basically any cryptocurrency you can assert there and its transactions are being executed on the blockchain. So what is happening on the blockchain are three things. First, it is an acknowledgement of the transactions that are occurring between the different addresses. So for example, for my Dogecoin address, I send some Dogecoin, 15 Dogecoin to Dogeyip. So that way I can type whatever I want on the Dogeyip uh, micro blog platform. So I go to my wallet, I open it up, I go to my address, I go to the Dogecoin, do not Dogecoin, but Dogeyip site. I see what they're, the address that they need for me to send the Dogecoin to. I then enter the amount, 15 Dogecoin, in my wallet. I enter the address that they want me to send the information to and I send it. That information, the transaction from my address and the information of the amount of Dogecoin and the address I'm sending to is automatically relayed to the blockchain and is permanently recorded. That transaction will forever be noted as having occurred. It allows the acknowledgement of the deduction of my wallet and the, also the increasing in the wallet address to Dogeship. But most importantly, it, it, it acknowledges the transaction in and of itself. It means that nothing is hidden on the blockchain. Everything that is occurring on the blockchain everything, all the transactions, no matter what cryptocurrency you're using is permanently recorded. So what this means is basically, like it's stated, a public ledger. All transactions are not only equal, there's no one going faster or slower than anyone else, but most importantly, they are forever noted. There's no no way, for example, as it occurs in the central banking system, that quantum easing occurring where they can just make out whatever amount of dollars necessary to pump the economy back into a better status. That's not going to happen with a block with the blockchain of any kind. Basically, particularly Bitcoin. Basically, whatever coins exist upon creation are only coins that can exist. So, for instance, you're not going to have the instance when it ha happens with fiat money, where someone is capable of creating false currency and you know counterfeiting. Uh, if someone were to try to attempt to counterfeit a Bitcoin or Dogecoin, it's going to be denied by the by the public ledger because they know that that particular, just like on uh, dollar bills, there's serial numbers that that serial number so associated with that Bitcoin does not exist. It could not exist. It has not been acknowledged by the public ledger. So therefore it's denied and that transaction will not occur. And that is the power of the public ledger. It knows every single Bitcoin that has ever existed. It will know in every single Bitcoin that will ever exist because everything is published onto the blockchain. And that is one aspect of the blockchain that makes it strong and powerful. The second aspect of the blockchain is the, the creation of the various Bitcoins that are current within the block. Now what a block is, what a block is, is a block of the files where the data pertaining to the Bitcoin network is permanently recorded. A block records some of all the most recent Bitcoin transactions that have not yet entered any of their prior blocks. Thus, a block is a, like a page of a ledger or a record book. Each time a block is completed, it gives way to the next block in the blockchain. A block is thus a permanent store of records which once written cannot be altered or removed. So just like your, your accounting book or your, your personal checkbook, if you were to flip through the pages, each of those pages will represent a block with all the different transactions you have written into it. Uh, a block, in essence, is the record keeping page. It contains all the transactions that occurred within the time that the, 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 that information is entered. And that's why you, like, like I said, once it's been entered, it cannot be removed. So for example, I send a 15 Dogecoin to Dogeyip. It enters the, the block that it enters in and is permanently recorded. Dogeyip or myself cannot go back in and try to remove that transaction from the blockchain. For example, maybe Dogeyip wants to do it and say that they didn't receive their Dogecoin or I want to do it and saying I never paid for that for those Dogecoin that that wasn't me that cannot happen which happens all the time with credit cards and debit cards all the time you get those chargebacks if you're a merchant you know whether someone actually steals your credit card or people are you know perpetrating a fraud and saying that they did not make these transactions that does not occur with the blockchain you cannot once a transaction occurs you cannot unwind it 
Now, that does not mean you cannot, for example, get your Dogecoin or Bitcoin back. For example, maybe you sent it to the wrong address. You can always message through the blockchain. There's a messaging service, just like an email through the blockchain to that address and state, you know, hey, I was trying to send it to this address. I entered the wrong address. Could I please, you know, have that Bitcoin or Dogecoin back? And for the most part, most people, when they do that, have received their Dogecoin or Bitcoin back. It does not always happen or occur. Another function is that for sending a Doge amount or a Bitcoin amount, a number of merchants have put a kind of like a block where you have to enter that exact amount that they want. Otherwise, their transaction won't go through. They won't accept it. This kind of prevents the overspending or underspending of Dogecoin or Bitcoin when it comes to that merchant. So that prevents, again, overspending and you're not going to have the issue of getting your Dogecoin or, or Bitcoin back. And on the merchant end, making sure that they receive all their funds. Just for example, like if you were to go to a store and give cash and maybe you forgot to give a dime or a nickel or a penny to make the transaction complete, but that cash cashier already accepted all the funds and it's not until the end of the day did they realize that not all their transactions were complete, that they are actually short. This is not going to occur with a Dogecoin or Bitcoin with that type of mechanism. Everything is, you know, taken in, everything is recorded, and everything is permanent. And that's what the blocks do. The other thing that the blocks do is they give what is called a reward. And that reward is the creation of the cryptocurrency, the creation of whatever cryptocurrency, whether it be Bitcoin or Dogecoin. And this is the rewards that goes to the miners. And I will get into what mining is and what the miners are about in uh, next week's episode. But in essence, why there's miners in existence is because they're the ones that are using their computer hashing power because everything is done through the internet. Everything is done through computers. They are the ones that are processing the blocks. They are using their hashing power. They're using their computer power to process the, the blocks, to process those transactions for the public ledger, publish it. And as a reward for using their computer power and for doing that task, they are rewarded in the, the cryptocurrency, whether it be Bitcoin, Dogecoin, or whatever cryptocurrency a person uses. That is their reward. That is how Bitcoins and Dogecoins or any kind of cryptocurrency is created. It's through mining. It's through processing these blocks and can doing the computing power and protecting the public ledger. By processing the blocks that permanently record all transactions that anyone and everyone makes when using whatever cryptocurrency there is, they are rewarded those Bitcoins or Dogecoins. So now that we know what blocks are and a little bit about mining, now back to the blockchain. The blockchain is seen as the main technological innov innovation of Bitcoin. Since it stands as proof of all the transactions on the network, a block is a current part of a blockchain which records some or all of the recent transactions and once completed goes into the blockchain as a permanent database. Each time a block is completed, a new block is generated. To use the conventional banking as an analogy, the blockchain is like a full history of bank, bank transactions. Bitcoin transactions are entered chronologically in a blockchain just the way bank transactions are. Blocks, meanwhile, are like individual bank statements. So the blocks are linked to each other like a chain in a proper linear chronological order with, e with every block containing a hash of the previous block. And based on the Bitcoin protocol, the Bitcoin database is shared by all the nodes participating in the system. The full copy of the blockchain has records of every Bitcoin transaction ever executed. It can thus prove insight about the facts of like how much value belongs a particular address at any point in the past, any point in the present. Now, there is a bit of an issue. You know, the ever-growing size of the blockchain is considered by some to be a problem due to the issue like storage and synchronization. On the average, every 10 minutes, a new block is appended to the blockchain and through mining. So basically, as Bitcoin grows or any cryptocurrency grows, the blockchain, the public ledger gets bigger and it's, you know, takes more hashing power, takes more mining power to find the blocks and to process the transactions to create the, the new uh, cryptocurrency as rewards to the miners for doing this. Uh, the nodes that, you know, have to contain the, block, the, the uh, blockchain are ever bigger and there's issue of storage because as things become popular and more people use it, more blocks are added to the chain. So think of this issue of what is called a block bloat to be that of your favorite band. You go out to a club, you're seeing your favorite band and when you see them, maybe the first time there's 50 people there is a small club and it contains 300. The next time you go, it's a full capacity of 300 people. Then they start becoming more and more popular and you go into bigger and bigger venues to eventually you get to the point where maybe you're seeing them at uh, the worst case scenario, a stadium sized place. So the ability for you to interact with the band is not as great. And that example can be viewed as the processing of the Bitcoin transactions. Your ability to get drinks at an easier pace, again, is another example of, you know, the Bitcoin transactions and processing. And one of these solutions is upgrading the uh, block space on the Bitcoin 
join in. Uh, another, you know, think of that in the sense instead of your your favorite rock band uh, going to a stadium size, what they do is just go to a smaller venue and allow for multiple showings of their show so more people can interact with the band, have a good time, and it's not that distance experience you have with a stadium rock. Now, the reason why I bring up about the, the Bitcoin block bloat is you're going to hear about it, about the fact that it takes uh, 10 minutes to process the transaction. It takes 10 minutes basically for the miners to process that information to enter it into the block. And, and it takes up to seven confirmations for a complete transaction for your information to com- be completed. So you're in essence waiting an hour for your acknowledgement of your transaction using Bitcoin. Uh, with Dogecoin, it's faster as a minute per transaction. So it's six minutes, but that's a long time when it comes to customer and, and merchant interaction. Now, a lot of uh, wallets and merchant providers, merchant service providers that transaction in the uh, cryptocurrency space guarantee on the merchant end that that transaction is going to be considered valid for them easier either one or two transactions for them considered valid just to prevent anyone attempting to even though those transactions won't be acknowledged but to you know put fake coins or fake transactions into the public ledger and and do a scam Uh, it's a bit of an issue and that's why there's other cryptocurrencies and different solutions out there but for the purpose of this episode i just want to put it out there for you but to understand the blockchain is you just have to understand that all it is this is a permit recording of every single transaction that occurs within any particular blockchain whether it be Dogecoin or Bitcoin. Now, to address the issue in anonymity, you hear about public ledger and everyone can see all transactions are occurring and you're thinking to yourself, I thought that Bitcoin in particular is anonymous. Is it anonymous in the sense than this? There's no one requiring your identification to open a Bitcoin wallet. Anyone and everyone can be part of the Bitcoin network. There's not a government entity. There's not a, a company that requires this identification for the purposes of opening a wallet. Now, when it comes to purchasing seen cryptocurrencies as a different issue and we'll, we'll talk about that on a different episode but to actually interact in the bitcoin or cryptocurrency space you don't need anyone's permission to do so all you have to do is have a computer whether it be a mobile device or a rinky dinky computer from 2002 that's still operating off of windows xp but not recommended because of the security vulnerabilities you can connect to the bitcoin network and you can have a wallet and you can interact in any of these cryptocurrency space that's it that's the anonymity part of of the public ledger of being part of the cryptocurrency space. Now, as far as individual addresses and funny individual identities, uh, with through time and effort, it is possible to identify either companies or people or individuals. Uh, but that take you could there are methods to prevent such uh, snooping of your address if you truly wish to be anonymous and you want to, in essence, have the the internet equivalent of cash in a box somewhere. There are ways to do that, but just on the raw basis of just hooking up with any crypto. Cryptocurrency. If you have a computer and a mobile device, your transactions can be tracked down to one particular address, particularly if you use the same address over and over again. Any purchase goods and services, all anyone has to do is determine where you purchase your goods and determine the address associated with that particular purchase. Finally, before uh, wrapping things up, addressing one little thing. I didn't discuss what powers the blockchain, which is cryptography, the mathematical principles that enable and allow each and every single cryptocurrency to exist exists, which powers basically the principles of the blockchain. And the reason why I haven't discussed it is because it's a very complicated math and I'll be discussing it in next week in the um, mining episode. But basically to understand the principles of that is just that math is what drives the blockchain. Math and the ability of computers connecting together onto the network, no matter which network it is, whether it be Bitcoin or Dogecoin, is what enables and allows for the blockchain to exist. And with that, I'm just going to leave the last note of summarizing this entire episode is basically the blockchain chain is a public ledger and allows for all transactions that ever occurred or will ever occur within whichever coin you use in the cryptocurrency space to be permanently recorded. It also allows for the processing of the transactions that occur within the within that blockchain and then the rewarding to the miners that enable and allow for the computer power power to enable the blockchain to exist, uh, the creation of the various cryptocurrencies that you use. That's it for this episode. Next will be my uh, podcast shout outs and thank you very much and to the moon.
my podcast shout outs go to Bitcoin Outposts, which has now gone from a twice weekly podcast to a weekly podcast. Still the same by size format, but it's still just the same, you know, greatness all around. So Bitcoin Outposts, Zap Chain, which is doing a, a series of video interviews uh, through their website of the various individuals associated with uh, the cryptocurrency space. The Lo-Fi Show, we're having some fun with bedtime stories. Uh, Strangers Conversations, which just uh, released its zero episode and will be officially launching on February 17th. Uh, I was interviewed as part of Strangers Conversation by the host Grant. And basically what it is, is he goes around and talks to random people and just speaks to them about their their life in general and and things that are going on and just, you know, speaking to someone he doesn't know about and just getting to know them. So great, fun little podcast. I encourage you to listen to the zero episode, but most importantly, to catch the full on uh, show on February 17th. Uh, Snake Oil Podcast, which is a great comic, comic book podcast, the Listening Party Podcast, which I've been listening to a lot lately. Very funny there. Uh, about music and just they basically pick a theme. Uh, the recent episode I listened to was called The Dangerous. Let's Get Dangerous, I should say, which is a, a Darkwing Duck re- reference for those not in the know. And basically they pick out songs that have uh, Dangerous in the title, Dangerous a lyric, da- you know, anything associated with Dangerous within the, the, that particular song. And then RL Noobs, which is a gaming podcast as well as Play On Gaming Compact, po- game, Play On, which is also a gaming podcast. Uh, Ken Talk, which is a, a podcast show that talks about iTunes and podcasting and interviews by Ken, Ken Braveman. I was also on his show and I talked uh, mostly about Dogecoin in my podcast. Thank you for listening to my show. You can find me, Hero Job Shibe, on the Twitter at Musings of a Shibe. You can find me at Google Plus as Musings of a Shibe. You can also find me on Facebook as Hero Job Shibe or Musings of a Shibe. You can also click on the show notes and look into the links and click directly onto those links. You can find me on uh, my webpage with Musings of a Shibe at uh, wordpress.com, the subreddit Musings of a Shibe podcast. You can also email me directly as Musings of a Shibe at Outlook. I'm now on YouTube where you can find the show under Musings of the Shibe. You can find the show and listen to the show on iTunes, Mixcloud, Soundcloud, Stitcher, Tune in radio, radio, Crypto Bucket, and SFXIO. You can also find Nerdist Podcast, me at Nerdist Podcast Coalition Group, a great podcast coalition on the Facebook. Thank you and have a great day. To the moon.